post-truth. British politics was dominated this year by the Brexit referendum. In America, it was the presidential election. Both campaigns caused spikes in the usage of the phrase post-truth. That is, when objective facts are less influential in shaping public opinion than appeals to emotion and personal belief. The phrase could now take on an even wider importance. It describes not just particular assertions, but a general characteristic of our age. And its usage in 2016 has sat overwhelmingly alongside just one other noun, cementing the idea of post-truth politics. The truth, lamented one British newspaper commentator recently, has become so devalued that what was once the gold standard of political debate is a worthless currency. Brexiteer. Just a couple of years ago, the UK still had Eurosceptics, politicians who criticised the European Union. Over the last year, though, most of those have hardened into Brexiteers, and they persuaded 17 million voters, who chose leave in Britain's EU referendum, to join them. Nigel Farage and his United Kingdom Independence Party have campaigned for years around this one issue. But the referendum's Brexiteers, that is, people who want Britain to withdraw from the EU, have come from across the political spectrum. Like a mountaineer or an auctioneer, a Brexiteer gets their name from the objective they're trying to achieve. And with Brexit dominating the Westminster agenda since June, that objective has now come a big step closer. Glass Cliff. In 2003, the Times of London published an article lamenting the leadership of FTSE 100 companies by female executives. The triumphant march of women into the country's boardrooms has wreaked havoc on company performance, it said. But two academics then undertook research that showed the exact opposite. The appointment of senior female execs tended, in fact, to be preceded by consistently poor corporate performance. The professors named this phenomenon of women and other minorities ascending to leadership positions where the risk of failure is high, the glass cliff. In 2016, as female politicians and business leaders have faced daunting new roles, the phrase has gained new resonance. Its popularity on Google, for example, peaked in the weeks following the Brexit referendum. Alt-right. This year's seismic political events, especially in the United States, have been impacted by an insurgent force, the alt-right. Extremely conservative and often reactionary, the loud voices of the alt-right fiercely reject mainstream politics. On their blogs, they deliberately crank up controversy and, through their provocative social media feeds, they galvanise millions of followers. Though its name dates back to at least 2010, the rise of the alt-right's voice, and therefore use of the term, mushroomed in 2016. A few years ago, alt-right was just a label for a small band of online ideologues. Today, it is bandied around on both sides of the political spectrum, either as a defiant banner or a derisive slur, and it signals a further fractioning of the traditional right-wing political bloc. Latinx. When native English speakers start to learn Spanish, they come up against a linguistic difference that has no English equivalent. Spanish nouns and adjectives both have grammatical gender. So, traditionally, a Latin American woman is Latina, but her brother is Latino. For Latin Americans who identify as trans, or as having another non-traditional gender identity, this isn't just a linguistic hurdle, it's inaccurate and excluding. During 2016, though, a gender-neutral alternative, Latinx, has seen increased usage, especially in the US. As the Huffington Post wrote in July, in a year where discussions about trans and non-binary identity are at the forefront, it makes sense for Latino to evolve. Chorophobia. It started in South Carolina in August. A small boy ran to his mother, saying that two scary clowns had tried to lure him into the woods behind their apartment complex. From there, creepy clown sightings have spread across the globe to Australia, Canada, and across the US. In the UK, police in just one county, Kent, had 59 clown-related incidents in just three days. No wonder then that internet searches have spiked for chorophobia, the extreme or irrational fear of clowns. Soon, though, the chorophobics could be having the last laugh, or at least the last evil red grin. Groups of clown hunters organised on Facebook are springing up worldwide, and where a scary clown starts a chase, they're chasing right back. Huger. This year, there has been an increased amount of attention on a Danish export, the cuddly concept of Huger. With no direct translation in English, Huger's definition is a quality of cosiness and comfortable conviviality that engenders a feeling of contentment or well-being. For example, according to the BBC website, 
sitting by a fire on a cold night, wearing a woolly jumper while drinking mulled wine. Chatbot. Have you ever phoned customer service, only to get stuck in a hopeless mire of automated options? Press 1 for yes, 2 for no. These days, you may well get a better experience if you go online. And that's why some technology commentators call 2016 the year of the chatbot. The chatbot is a computer program that simulates conversation with a human user, especially over the internet. Companies, including Domino's Pizza, KLM, CNN, deployed chatbots on the messaging service Facebook Messenger this year, after Facebook allowed chatbots onto Messenger for the first time in April. Indeed, within just three months, over 11,000 chatbots had launched on the platform. No wonder then that chatbots have been called the new apps. Woke. As the news was filled this year with violent acts of bigotry and discrimination, many people were revulsed into using the word woke in a new way. They want to make sure they don't ever turn a blind eye to social injustice, particularly racism. They want, in other words, always to stay woke. In African-American vernacular English, woke has been used this way for decades. In 2016, though, it's become a proud badge for people of diverse nationalities and ethnicities, as they too stand up against prejudice. Adulting. If you're old enough to be an adult, yet nonetheless forcing yourself to behave like an adult, then you are adulting. Adulting, reported Time magazine in June, is a jokey way of describing one's engagement in adult behaviours, whether that is doing your own taxes, staying in on a Friday, or getting super pumped about home appliances. And newly grown up millennials aren't the only ones in flux. The word adult itself has also transitioned from noun to verb and then back to this new noun, as in, I'm taking a step back from adulting and letting someone else cook dinner.